What's up everybody, the Blue Fang here, and today I'm here with a what if that I've been thinking of doing for a while. I've never done it before, but I kind of did something similar with the whole village leaving thing in the Akatsuki what if, but this time we have Naruto forcefully being removed from the village. It might be interesting, so if you want it to be continued, let's get this video to 70 likes for the next part. I got like 4 other what ifs planned, so I'm hoping I'll release them all in this week. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. So we're met with a gush of hot, sorrowful wind. It brushes past the figure walking through, you could say, the middle of nowhere. This figure is a person, and he has no goals or objectives. He walks aimlessly throughout the vast land with nowhere to go. He doesn't have a clue on where he is or how he even got to this place. He now uses one of the only things he knows, which is his legs, and continues to walk and walk, but still not getting anywhere. Hell, even if he got somewhere, it'd be meaningless. He has no aim. Whatever the end result is, he'd take it. It doesn't matter as he's so truly empty. The person named Naruto Uzumaki. His dusty cloak sways side to side with the wind rocking them as he strolls through the dry land. He has no idea where he is, no idea how he ended up here, and no idea who he truly is. The only thing he knows about himself is his name, where it's totally useless since he doesn't even have a full identity. Naruto coughs. He hasn't had water in days. He now begins to suffer from that fact. He realizes this himself and starts to walk faster. He obviously knows what water is and how it could help him, he just doesn't know where to get it. So he continues to travel faster until he's able to get somewhere. A place that'd help him calm down and focus on everything that has happened and just to drink some water. He's been like this for days, about two days, just walking and getting nowhere. But finally, he finds a place where it looks like people reside. Naruto looks up whilst huffing and puffing and spots the small buildings. He sees people walking. This definitely looks like a place where water would be, he thinks to himself, and rushes towards this saving grace. Let's cut to a short flashback. A few days ago in Konoha, the village made a lot of noise, which was all about the nine-tailed fox. They fear it a lot more in this story, and even though Kage Hiruzen is having doubts about the Jinshuriki, this time Hiruzen wouldn't be as nice as he was in the original. He'd want to please a majority of people in the village, and a majority would be the people who fear and hate Naruto. His number one priority would keep them from having any doubts about how they live and have peace in their minds, since this isn't wartime anymore. He wants everyone to feel safe, and he'd do anything for that. So with people criticizing the village for keeping the nine-tailed fox, the strongest of all tailed beasts right in their home village, they push the Hokage to banish him from Konoha and leave him in the wild. They tell him that even if it's a child, it's the nine-tailed fox anyway, he can protect himself. Hiruzen hears all of their cries and with Naruto being able to move around and fight as he is a student of the academy, he thinks to himself that he should send the kid out of the village. With a grin, he makes up his mind and prepares to do it. This Hiruzen isn't a caring one, but one who feels his own desires, which is to hear the praises of the village and please his own ego. He tells some of his journeying to get ready to use a memory erasing seal and send Naruto far from the village. The journey proceeds to go find Naruto and ambush him, then operate the seal on him. Hiruzen plans to erase Naruto's memories of the village and what's about to happen to him. He mustn't have someone like Naruto go around outside telling everyone what Konoha had done to him. He knows Naruto would still have his fighting power inside of him, so he should survive by himself. So eventually the objective is done. Naruto's memory has been erased and he is taken by five Jonin outside of the village to wherever it is far enough for him not to return. We cut back to where Naruto is, which is the place he had just stumbled upon. He finally found a goal, which is water. He needs water. Now, he races towards the settlement and tries to find one of the many people he had seen when walking to this location. He dashes in every direction, searching and searching, but as he does, he can't find anyone. Was he dreaming? Was there really anyone at this place? As he wonders this, he turns his head and then sees a well. His eyes brighten up and he runs right towards it. He puts his whole entire head inside it and drinks. He continues to drink until he's finally satisfied. Naruto pulls his head from the water and wipes his whole face. Now, what next? He thinks this as he walks towards one of the homes of this small settlement. He definitely needs some rest, so shelter would be the right move. He goes right towards the door of one of the homes and tries to slide it open, but it doesn't budge. He goes again, but with a little more muscle to it. It doesn't open. This time, he grits his teeth and uses both of his arms and goes for it. It finally opens up, and there he's met with a wooden staff slammed right into his face. He falls down, knocked out, and the person who did it pulls Naruto right inside the home. 
We cut to later with Naruto awakening from being knocked out with multiple people looking down on him. He's confused about what's going on and tries to move, but he doesn't budge. He's tied onto a bed and can't move around for now. The people talk amongst themselves. It's too jumbled up for Naruto to make out what they're saying, but even then, it doesn't look like they're attacking him. He sees men, women, and children all surrounding him. He has a confused look on his face, but even they have confused looks on their faces. They don't know who this boy is and why he's here. These people of this settlement are outcasts, people who have been scared away from their own village. They're a clan that has been feared and didn't have the power to defend themselves. Well, now you might be thinking why would they run off if they're feared, and why they can't defend themselves with whatever makes their village fear them. Well, it's because of what they could transform it into, and not what they could do right now. Their clan is an old one that has been known to transform into creatures on certain days. They never know which days because it's usually at random, and these creatures are strong enough to cause chaos and destroy our whole entire village. Only fellow clan members could stop the rampage, but in a large village, you wouldn't know if a clan member is with them when they transform. The villagers were worried because of this and made them leave. Now they're here in a settlement far out in the land of Shinobi, but at least they have homes to stay in and food to eat. Naruto stares at them and decides to ask why he's strapped to a bed. The house turns quiet and no one says a word, they just look back at Naruto. But finally, the clan leader comes up right to Naruto and tells him that he's tied up because they don't know what he's capable of and why he's here. Naruto laughs and continues to do so. What he's capable of? He's capable of nothing, he tells them. He's just some empty ghost floating through the land. He's a no one. He can't do anything and he doesn't even know why he's here himself. He shouts all of this at these people in a rage-filled voice. The clan is shocked when they hear this and everything goes silent again. The leader nods his head and unties Naruto. He could feel the pain in Naruto's voice when he had said all of this. He then decides to ask him which village he's from, and Naruto replies with he doesn't even know himself. He has no clue who he truly is. He just tells them that his name is Naruto Uzumaki. That's it. That's all he knows about himself. He doesn't know who he truly is, or where he came from. He just ended up walking by himself through the lands. The leader nods his head and starts to understand who Naruto is. Someone who has been abandoned, that's who. Someone like them, someone like the whole of their clan. Abandoned and forced to walk the lands for comfort since their own home has been taken out of their reach. The leader reaches their hand out to Naruto and tells them that he could stay for a while until he thinks of what to do in his life. Naruto hesitates for a second, thinking that someone like him can't do anything with their memory gone, but one small piece of hope pushes him to reach out to the leader's hand, and he shakes it, and the leader shows Naruto where he could stay for now. Naruto right now needs to find out who he is and where he came from. He has to set out for what his purpose is in this world where he sees meaningless. He's empty right now, but that only gives him the chance to make himself full of many things that could carve a great path. A path for him to finally become someone. He doesn't even need to be the greatest, but just someone, a person. Someone with an identity. Naruto's first step would be learning about the world of Shinobi from this clan he has come across. Then he can make his way to do something big for himself. Something that will let him truly become, well, Naruto Uzumaki. And that's where I'm gonna end it off for today, hopefully you did enjoy, and if you did, make sure to like the video, remember to get it up to 70 likes for the next part. This would have could potentially become something really good if it continues, so if you want to see that, then get those likes up. But like always, subscribe if you haven't, hit the like button, and turn on bell notifications. It's been the Blue Fang, peace.